got a question about that because so the two clients mm -hmm. were you did you have a niche because I know it's a lot of different um, arenas or areas you can go down with healthcare whether it's uh, elderly whether it's um, uh, medically fragile children um, you know uh, what is this I've heard some other verbs like skilled and unskilled I know it's a lot of different lanes so when you were able to get that 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 first two check was it a just you were helping anyone with any type of illness or mental illness so, or what was going on? Yeah, so this is where you guys are going to get to see the transition from like what I was doing then to the healthcare I'm doing now. Okay. So in the residential care homes, we actually were taking care of people who had behavioral issues. So okay. it was actually through a program that was called Now in Comp. So what happens is anybody who has a specific like uh, disability like multiple personality disorder mm -hmm. or developmental delay or if there was autism or something mm -hmm. like that, then they would have extreme behavior. So it might be a situation you come to the home, they're going to beat your ass. Like they'll come in there and try to grab your caregivers, punch your staff. You call the police over there. They're sitting over here tasing your residents because they don't properly know how to deal with them because they don't understand that psychologically they're not there. And gotcha. so then it puts into a situation where like we got to go to court. We got to let them know you're not supposed to arrest this person because they got a mental illness and mm. like just all kinds of stuff. This, this and, was pediatrics, right? No. So this is adults. Yeah, so during this time, this is adults, but we're going to get to the pediatrics for okay. sure. <laughs> we definitely going to get there. <laughs> but you're going to see why yeah. we transition out of that okay. to start going into pediatrics. Okay. So yeah. that was just a really, really, really hard business to be able to sustain because you would always have a lot of turnover. Because when you would hire, like, you know, your, um, your caregivers to be able to come in, they had to stay at the home 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So... Like every time like you had an incident or you had to write up these reports, then they would go into the system, the Medicaid would come out and they would audit you and you had to go through these reviews and it just got really, really crazy. And then it was a situation to where, and this is so crazy, like it was a crazy situation to where the state would come, they would do an audit, they would look at all your books and they would try to shut you down so they can get the business to the bigger providers. Mm -hmm. So you had really large agencies that were like, you know, a thousand plus residents or like 2000 residents. And then the smaller providers who were giving the really hands-on care to the clients who really needed it, they might only have like, you know, six to 12 clients or something like mm -hmm. that. They wanted to shut them down so they can give all the business to the larger providers. Large providers. So while that was happening, we went from 12 personal care homes that we had built, thinking that we were made it, thought that we had did what we need to do in healthcare, all the way up to 12 homes, we was rocking, and then all of a sudden the state came and started shutting down every single home we had systematically mm. until we were down to one last home. And we got to that one last home, we were like, we didn't know what to do. And I was actually staying in the building right, this building right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it was so wild. Brad has some money, because this not a cheap building. Brad, he still was paid. So this is after the struggle. This is after... They need to make sure the context. They need to know this was not the car behind the dumpster when he was doing this. Go ahead. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So when I was doing this, we got to the point that we were doing well enough to stay in a really, really nice place mm -hmm. and to be able to have like you know really nice cars and everything else. And um, when they started like you know shutting all of our different homes down and getting us back down to like you know one home, we didn't have any money to be able to pay our rent. So what I would do is I would take my credit card and I would take the money off the card to be able to pay the rent and then just pay the minimum premiums on the credit card to be able to subvert how much I had to pay per month to be able to keep the bills all together. Yeah. Like it made it work. I made that. I don't know how the hell I made it work, <laughs> but yeah. it worked out for like a good six to seven months. So we were trying to keep our last home from getting shut down because we knew if that was shut down, like we were really screwed. We we're going to get put out of our apartment. So basically what I had to do was this is so crazy. Until this day, if the state of Georgia is watching, you're going to know exactly who actually did this whole initiation in the first place. Uh -oh. What I did was I created a random, fictitious suit. 